Hi there, good morning, welcome to IndyCar's uh, special show. I suppose it is a special show because I was going to do this one uh, later in the day. It is, what, the 3rd of November today. Now, in the news today, a uh, Cambridge microbiologist and, and virology expert has claimed today that the new variant that we're seeing of COVID-19, which has spread rapidly through the UK population and is currently causing a, immense damage to people all across the country, uh, with thousands of people hospitalised every day with new cases of this new variant. He claims that this uh, new variant wouldn't have happened, it wouldn't have got out of control had the UK government not relaxed its, uh, its COVID-19 restrictions, particularly things like mask wearing, social distancing and so on. And it's possible from listening to this, uh, this expert from Cambridge University to conclude that somehow the British government did this on purpose, for some reason they did this on purpose. Now why would the British government deliberately relax uh, the rules on mask wearing, social distancing and opening club and venues and failing to uh, inoculate or, or to vaccinate uh, young people and children at school age? Because they already knew that this new variant, this uh, Delta variant, was beginning to spread throughout the UK at the time when they relaxed these measures in the first place. So it looks as though this was a deliberate move. They took the risk with people's health and uh, well-being on purpose. Now, from the point of view of the Scottish independence referendum, we know that Nicola Sturgeon has said that she will not call uh, an independence referendum until there is a clear end in sight to the COVID pandemic. But with this new variant, the end is definitely not in sight. And of course, Nicola Sturgeon has confirmed yesterday, and I mentioned this in yesterday's programme, that the date for the next uh, independence referendum is likely to be 2023. Now, this uh, tells me that this plan that the British government has had uh, for relaxing its measures on COVID-19 may have had an ulterior motive, which was to prolong the pandemic for another year, uh, thus delaying any independence referendum for another 12 months, at least possibly longer than that, in fact. Uh, I'm not sure if it is, has been done deliberately for that purpose, but it's certainly having that effect. Now, also on today's news, but not mentioned in the mainstream, interestingly, the former Bank of England boss, uh, Mark Carney, who um, I think he gave up his post as the Bank of England CEO uh, a year and a half ago, maybe longer than that. Anyway, he is in the news, but not on the mainstream news, uh, because he has formed what's known as the Glasgow Alliance for net zero. And this is a uh, a group, a loose group of um, investors and corporate bodies which control together, the whole lot of them, uh, approximately £13.5 trillion pounds worth of funding which has been basically earmarked for a just transition globally to net zero. Now this is interesting for one reason and that is this Glasgow connection. Um, for some peculiar reason, I'm not sure why this has happened, but Mark Carney has decided this Glasgow group, as it's called, has now got the funding uh, to basically assist countries with decarbonising. Now, this has not been mentioned in COP26. It's not been mentioned in the mainstream media for some reason. And I suspect the reason is that it contains the word Glasgow in the title. And, well, heaven forfend that the the British media should mention Glasgow in a positive light with regards to an enormous amount of money, thirteen and a half trillion pounds, or it may maybe dollars. I may have uh, uh, misquoted, but even so, thirteen point five trillion of anything is thirteen point five thousand thousand million dollars. Now that is enough money to basically run a country, never mind decarbonise the rest of the world. So there is an enormous sum of money there available, and yet nobody is mentioning this. Uh, and the BBC and ITN have made no mention of it at all in the television news. Interestingly, I had to scroll down through a lot of news feeds and a lot of websites to find this item. And there it was, and Carney saying that the money is there, uh, that his group has got it organised, it's ring-fenced, it's ready to invest. And yet nobody's mentioning it, simply because the word Glasgow appears at the title. Now, also, it's emerged today through uh, a number of um, 
<laughs> I think we'd have to say eagle-eyed COP26 reporters that Boris Johnson's recent speech to COP26, um, far from being actually delivered to a packed house of world leaders, was actually delivered to a hall which was virtually empty, and yet none of this appeared on the mainstream media either. Uh, the clip in question showed Boris Johnson giving his speech after being introduced uh, I think it was by uh, Ursula von der Leyen, who, who is the European Commissioner. And uh, he gave his speech, and she thanked him for the speech, and the camera went to a wide view, and you could see that there was perhaps, at the very most, maybe 15 or 20 delegates sitting in a virtually empty hall. And yet this also went unreported mysteriously by the UK press. <clears throat> so we have an invisible fund, which nobody's talking about, of $13.5 trillion. Uh, we have Boris Johnson giving a speech to an empty hall, virtually, and nobody is saying anything about it in the mainstream media. And yet here I am on the non-mainstream media mentioning it to you now. Which brings me to the last piece of news today, which is a piece of good news I've heard from my contacts uh, who are arranging the new uh, independence news channel which we are starting up and I've been told actually that it looks like we may not need to wait until the end of the month to see this channel up and running and if we're successful in the next few days uh, in running a private pilot of this uh, new channel you will be able to access this not only on your own devices on your uh, mobile phones on your tablets and your laptops and your PC at home if you want to, but you'll also be able to watch it regularly on television uh, using Amazon Fire if you have such a thing. Right, so if you have Amazon Prime or you have an Amazon Fire Stick and you have paid your fee, you will be able to watch this new channel on a widescreen television in the comfort of your own home, just as you do with ordinary news. So at the moment we are in the testing phase of this and I'm about to record a show which is going to be used uh, just privately to make sure the channel is set up correctly. Once it is set up, then it will be open for all independent uh, video bloggers and professional uh, presenters such as Broadcasting Scotland to use if they wish and will allow us all to have our own channel, which is not the BBC and not the ITN, in which we can actually tell you this news, which is not being reported. So that's it from me today. I just thought you might be interested to know the news which is being held back. And it is being held back. Remember, the British uh, mainstream media picks and chooses what it shows you. And it doesn't show you things like Boris Johnson preaching to an empty hall. And it doesn't tell you that uh, Mark Carney, who is, let's face it, an independent financial expert of probably the highest order, has already organised a Glasgow group with $13.5 trillion worth of funding available for global decarbonisation, and nothing is being said about it. Um, so there you go. There are other items of news um, in today's programme which I didn't have time for. There is still talk at the moment of uh, a different route towards independence coming from other groups who have been looking at the legalities uh, of how Scotland can obtain its independence if a referendum is prevented by the British government. And it's interesting to note that according to legal experts in some of these uh, proposals, the only uh, parliamentarians, Scottish parliamentarians that is, who have any <coughs> legal right, if you like, to make a decision on Scotland's independence are actually our MPs, because Parliamentarians in Holyrood, the MSPs that we rely on to run Scotland most of the time, apart from the critical funding from the UK, are actually uh, actually do not have the legal right to declare independence, even if they hold a referendum. It has to come from our MPs according to international law, or in fact according to international constitutional law, because until Scotland leaves the UK uh, and leaves the United Kingdom Union behind, the only elected uh, officials, Scottish elected officials, who can declare independence are actually our SNP and Green MPs. And it would be up to them, if there is a successful vote in a referendum, to come back to Scotland and to announce Scotland's independence to the world. 
I will talk again uh, at length about other proposals for how we can obtain independence if a referendum is prevented. There are other routes, and uh, the SNP, of course, doesn't want to follow these routes at the moment because they're pursuing this particular route, and I'm not criticising them. I'm just saying, like many other things uh, in the world, uh, other <laughs> other products are available. There are other ways, legally, of obtaining your independence. And let's face it, Scotland is actually pursuing a route that's never been tried before. Nobody has ever yet obtained their independence from the British Empire or from the United Kingdom using a democratic system such as a referendum. It's not been done before. Um, referendums have been held after declarations of independence have been made to confirm them. But I don't think it's been done this way before. So what Nicola Sturgeon is proposing is actually breaking new ground. It would set a new precedent if it's successful. But we do need to have a plan B and we need to talk about it. And we shouldn't be scared to talk about other legal constitutional means of getting independence because there are some. Uh, and despite the fact that the SNP does not want to pursue those at the moment, doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have any credibility because they do. And there are many international legal experts who agree that there are other ways to do this. Anyway, I don't want to discuss that today. I just wanted to leave, leave you with these four thoughts. That the spike in COVID-19 that we are seeing with this new variant and the continuance of the pandemic is largely down to the United Kingdom deliberately relaxing its COVID restrictions at a time when they knew a new variant was about to spread. Secondly, Mike, uh, Mark Carney has this Glasgow uh, Alliance for Net Zero organised with the funding, the $13.5 trillion, ready to help the world decarbonise, and yet nobody is mentioning this. Boris Johnson's speech was made to an empty hall, and yet nobody has said anything about that on the mainstream media. And finally, the new independence news channel, which I was talking about over the last two days, looks like it may be a reality before I thought it would be. So I'll keep you posted on any new developments, and if and when the new channel goes live, you'll be the first to hear about it here. Anyway, that's it for today. I'd like to thank the 213 of you who are still watching live as I'm talking to you just now. The, uh, the channel here at IndyCar has been regularly getting well over 200 views for each each show. In fact, we reached a high watermark the other day of 293. So another seven and we'll crack the 300 barrier. But anyway, that's it from me today. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. In the meantime, remember, cheer up and always tune in to the place where you're going to get the news that's been kept from you because there is a lot of news being kept from you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.